in the nicest way possible, Declan Rice has let it be known that he doesn't see his future at West Ham. No grey areas, in his own words, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I think for the last two, three years, you know, I've been saying that. Um, you know, I've been playing consistently well for the club. Um, and I feel like I really want to, you know, keep pushing. Like you said, I see my friends here who are playing Champions League, winning the big trophies. You know, you only get one career. Um, and at the end of your career, you want to look back and by what you've won and the, the biggest games you've played in. And, you know, I'm really ambitious and, you know, I really want to do that. He's ambitious. He feels like he's been in good form for West Ham. His friends are winning trophies. But at the end of the career, he thinks it's important you look back and look at the trophies you've won. As respectfully as he can, he's basically saying, oh, I'm leaving and probably alerting some clubs to his availability if they didn't know so already. I don't blame him at all. I, I like Declan. I think he's carried himself really, really well. But it's not... It's not surprising, any of this. We, we knew this already, as I mentioned. I do think he's carried himself well. By the way, if you've watched that whole press conference that he featured in then, it was quite a jovial and upbeat press conference. De Declan Rice knew how he was delivering that news there. If you've actually watched the whole thing in his entirety, and the vast majority of it was, was, <clears throat> excuse me, was about England, that was just a little snippet where he was asked about uh, his club, he was he was happy, he was bouncy, he was animated. The way he was answering questions and dealing with, with the press, he had a big smile on his face. There were jokes about him bringing an additional suitcase to the World Cup so he can take the World Cup home in it. Very, very bouncy. When he was asked about his club, his demeanour, he dropped. He had a straight face. Go and watch it again. He's very respectful. He's speaking quite solemnly. And that's, that's for the West Ham fans. That's because he knows... He's delivering crappy news, basically. And that is all about that. He knows that the England fans are not going to care about that. He knows that there'll be Chelsea fans who are pleased to hear this news. Any club that's linked with him, any any fans of a club, maybe you're a Liverpool fan and you, you want Declan Rice in your team, particularly after he played against Liverpool, you're watching that, you're thinking, yeah, I, I like this. So he knows that news, by and large, is not solemn, is not bad news but he knows it's going to be for West Ham fans. So he very much reins it in. He, he stops his bubbly, jovial self. That's, I think that's nice. I think it shows you know really good awareness of, of what he's doing there as well. Fair play to him. I mean, it is crappy news, but it's, it's not surprising news, is it? And I think it's going to be difficult for him. He alluded to it in that little clip that I just played there, which is my, my teammates, my friends. He actually says the word friends, my friends. Uh, at England, they're winning trophies. They're going to be in his ear all the time anyway. You know, I'll oh, come and join us. What are you doing at West Ham? There'll be some form of tapping up there. By the way, I think West Ham have done... We know West Ham have done it. My word. I mean, you know, we <laughs> agent Suchek and all that. Look at what how we've, I think, probably utilised uh, Cornet and Emerson and, uh, to basically try and get the Paqueta deal over the line. It, it's what happens. This is, this is just how it's done. And I don't blame him. He, he plays alongside Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish is a really good marker for... Um, when I say marker, I don't, I don't mean a man marker. I mean a sort of line in the sand or a reference point, let's say. But Declan Rice, uh, because Grealish was the main man at Aston Villa. Um, you know, really lauded and loved at Aston Villa. Gets the big money move and goes to Man City, where he's not the main man. Uh, far from it. So he's gone from being the main man and uh, the big fish in the small ponds to being amongst, you know, players who are who are better than him I think it's fair to say that but he's got trophies and he's winning the trophies and he would have spoken to Grealish and anyone has seen it, Grealish doing Grealish has a lot of clips on social media and stuff like that he seems happy I mean you can't really and you can't blame him for that you probably look at someone like Declan at West Ham this is probably a relief for him to be away with England at West Ham you've got the weight of your world on your shoulders we're doing crap it's it's probably quite a miserable place to be a lot of the time and he's he's probably looking at, at some of these players and thinking okay uh, um, you, you lot you lot are happy this is a happier place to be he probably thinks I want somebody it's not just the trophies he probably wants to be in an environment where he can thrive and where excellence thrives and where top level players thrive and that ain't West Ham I mean we've We've tried, don't get me wrong, I'm not overly blaming the club for this. I think we've tried, but ultimately we're not able to match Declan Rice's ambition. I certainly don't blame Declan Rice for that. Don't get me wrong, there's things that I think we could have done better. I think we failed to recognise Declan's ambition 
in that sense. I think we thought, as a club, the answer to Declan Rice's ambition was to throw in more and more money, to tie him down to a contract. Declan's shown that he's not that interested in money. That's why he's turned down three contracts. Probably for the last two years, he's been earning 100 grand a week less at West Ham than he could have done if he'd accepted that contract. He's not money motivated. He's trophy money motivated. But I think so. I think there's other things we could have done aside from chuck money at him to match his ambition and prove that West Ham was the right place for him. I'll go back to last January. It was that was a time for us to prove when we were already in the knockout stages of the Europa League, and I think we should have brought a player in then. I think we should have brought in a player, a top class player, and said, "There you go, Deck. We're not only we're bringing them in. This is how we're going to progress. This is how we're going to go in the future. But we're actually doing it now because to West Ham it's important to win a trophy." Not just it's important, we know it's important for you, Declan, to win a trophy, it's important for West Ham. So we're bringing in this other quality player and we're doing it now. We're going to pay whatever it takes to do that. I think he needed to see that, then he didn't. And I think you saw it in his in his demeanour, if in his body language, If but certainly not his performances on the pitch. I mean, Declan always gives 100%, even at a time like this, where it's a pretty crappy time to be at West Ham. He's got the third highest running stats in the Premier League. So, I mean, he's trying his arse off, there's no doubt about it. That being said, I do think this season the club have tried. It just hasn't worked out. We've chucked £180 million at the project. But it is a project. And unfortunately, the project is painfully slow. £180 million is an awful lot of money and it does show ambition. But unfortunately, what that has not done is translated to performances on the pitch. The money spent has not translated into a better West Ham team. And, and that's a shame. Uh, ambition, yeah. I mean, Manchester United and Chelsea spent more in world football than West Ham. That's amazing. And it's really, really impressive. But unfortunately, we've not been able, out of that, to mould a better... I was going to say a world-class team, even a better team. That's just not happened. Now, we'll get into the rec recriminations about that on, an, on another time. You know, m maybe... Maybe it could have been done better. The players just haven't settled and they haven't managed to match... Their value. I think that's that's fair to say that maybe it would have been different if we'd have bought more acclimat players that were acclimatised to the Premier League and they hit the ground running, maybe something like that. But it's just not happened. And I, I do feel when you spend £180 million that it's important to bring in players when you're spending £50 million here and £35 million there, that you're bringing in players alongside Declan Rice that you're able to say to Declan, here you go, we're, we're, we're trying. Uh, and these players that we're bringing in... At, are your equal. These are players that are like you. So when Declan looks around the training field, it's like, okay, he's he's top class. He's like me. He's top class. That's like me. That's not happened. We've spent all this money and Declan is still head and shoulders the best player at the club. So for that reason, it's not worked out. However, when he goes uh, and he goes away with England, he probably looks around the squad, not even just the squad, he's only got to look next to him in central midfield and see Jude Bellingham there. I'm thinking, you know, actually, I, I recognise that. That quality of player, I recognise that he's like, maybe, I probably might even look at Joe Jubilee and think, fuck, he's even better than me. And that's what you want to see, because that's going to raise your own level. He's probably learning nothing as a player from anybody at West Ham anymore, because he's so far better than anybody else there. And it's not just that, uh, it must be awe-inspiring to play with someone like Bellingham, Foden, uh, Grealish... Harry Kane, Rashford, as he's looking, the form he's getting into now. And, and amongst those players, they'll be playing at clubs who possibly want to buy him. And that's got to be tempting. And I think now he's probably in this environment, as I say, that's not doom and gloom like it probably seems at West Ham at the moment. He's probably a lot happier. And I'm feeling... Feeling more familiar, feeling more in his own company with other players who are at his standard. So I don't blame Declan at all. I think he's handled it um, really, really well, actually. And when I look at how he's handled it, I think he's done it with the utmost respect. No problem at all. In terms of value, that's a slightly different subject. Maybe, by and large, a subject for another day. Here's where we are with his contract, and this is why he's able to do this now. Technically, his contract ends at the end of this season. But we have an option, a two-year option, where we can extend that to keep him contracted to West Ham for an additional two years after the end of this season. Now it seems like the right time to sell him, and it's been an open secret that there's a gentleman's agreement to sell him at the end of this season. He will stay, and he will give West Ham everything. And that's absolutely great. Look, Liverpool are up for sale. 
Man United are up for sale. I'd expect they'll both get bought. I do think that might be to the detriment of West Ham, by the way. I think there's a, probably possibly a couple of buyers there who now won't be buying West Ham. As you know, if you watch the channel regularly, I, I do not believe that, that Kratinsky will take full ownership of the club. Um, so we, we may well find that actually when it gets to April that West Ham aren't sold, as, as many people sort of think and hope. Um, but it may well mean that there might be a bid in war. At the moment, Liverpool can't afford Bellingham and Declan Rice, they get taken over, they might just. So I, th I think stuff like that is going to really impact what happens with Declan. In terms of the glory, Declan can still finish his West Ham career on a high, and I mean a massive, massive high. And it'd be good for Declan, it'd be good for West Ham. If we can win that Conference League, it's it would be absolutely massive. It would give Declan a real fond memory of West Ham. It means he finishes his West Ham career on a high with a trophy. By the way, that, that's really, that's really, really important, isn't it? You know, for him to win a trophy, as he alluded to, to clip at the start of the video. He really wants to win. And I think he'd be really proud of that, to win a trophy at West Ham. I have no reason to disbelieve that he is not an, an exceptional young man. Um, and I think he's got a lot of love for West Ham. And he probably, he probably has a slightly heavy heart about the way it's, it's happened. He probably wanted West Ham to progress more at his pace. And he's probably... He's probably gutted to see West Ham move backwards this season. But he can't stay around, as he said. You know, he's you you are judged on what you've done as a player. Well, in football terms, of course, uh, at the very least. Be massive for West Ham to win a trophy. And, you know, I, I just hope it all... I hope it all ends well in that regard. I really do. I mean, I'd be, be gutted to see the worst-case scenario, which, of course, you know, we saw... With, with Joe Cole and, and then obviously Scott Parker. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about relegations here where, you know, we have players that excel for us and try and do really well, but ultimately, despite their brilliance and their excellence, they're not able to... They're, they're not able to counterbalance how bad West Ham are at that particular time and that given time. So I, I really hope it gets sorted out. I really do. Um, good for Declan. Really, really pleased that he's... For, for him, that he's... He seems to be in that sort of bubbly mood that he is now. I really hope England can win uh, the World Cup. Not just for Declan, I quite like England to win the World Cup as well because I do think it would benefit West Ham as well. I think he'd come back uh, with a spring in his step. I think he'd come back um, with the knowledge that he probably is going to get his move, which might, and but enough sort of joy at winning the World Cup to see him through. <laughs> The misery of playing for West Ham uh, for the next little while. You don't know. Maybe there'll be an uplift in the at the training grounds. Maybe all the players have gone back today, and it might be a slightly happier camp uh, when he gets back. Uh, but I certainly think uh, it will it will be helpful. It will be helpful for him and for the club if he can do the very best that he can. Uh, there we go. Uh, th th there you go. No massive surprise to Declan. Um, basically announcing, saying, come on, come and get me. I want to leave. Uh, I do think it's it's going to be really important to see what happens in terms of uh, a, bid in, a bid in war, in terms of his value, because that plays into it a little bit, doesn't it? I'm not sure we'll get 100 million. So there, there comes a cut-off point, as I mentioned before. If if it's 90 million, I think you've just got to take it. If there's a bit of a bid in war, fine. I think if it's down at 50 million, I think they, something comes into play, gentleman's agreement or no gentleman's agreement. I think if he's, someone's offering 50 million, then actually you get 50 million with one year on the contract. You might as well keep him around. But yeah, but you don't want an unhappy player. So I do really hope that some sort of resolution uh, can be can be found. I feel I feel slightly. I don't feel annoyed that Declan's leaving. I'm slightly annoyed that we've taken as much time and things have. Not, I don't want to say capitulated, but things have slowed down or gone into reverse at West Ham as much as they have. I do think there was an opportunity last January. I don't think we grasped it. I do think the club went for it with the money in, in this transfer, the most recent transfer window. But ultimately, you have to say, as it stands at the moment, the choices in terms of signings have not worked out enough or quickly enough to help Declan Wise. Maybe in the long term, they will. But in terms of hitting the ground running, we needed that. We needed, we needed to see that 180 million basically been translated to an upturn in form and an upturn in results it, it it hasn't it it really really hasn't it hasn't it's it's not made any difference at all and now we find ourselves in this situation with Declan had that money been spent a bit more wise not wisely or better or had it have worked out had every player have hit the ground running I know not every player does hit the ground running but let's be fair there are there are there's a lot of examples 
of players who have signed and gone into their clubs and played well immediately. Um, and lots of lots of them this season, every single season. It just hasn't happened. We haven't been able to do it at West Ham. We haven't, for whatever reason, we haven't been able to integrate the players. Had that have happened and Paqueta had worked out brilliantly and Skabaka and, and all the others, and West Ham were currently fifth in the Premier League and riding high in, in Europe as we are. Maybe, just maybe, Declan Rice might have looked at it. Wow, you know, this team are really going places. And then we would say, well, do you know what, Declan? We're not stopping now. We're going to do another 100 million next season. Declan might have been able to say, OK, we're going somewhere. We're building world-class players. Um, it's not happened. And, and Declan's going. There you go. Um, not massively sad about it because I say it wasn't unexpected at all. And uh, there you go. Anyway, bit of a uh, bit of average West Ham news for you.